<laughs> oh my god. What? <sighs> so f satisfying. Yeah, wow. Um, we are at the end of probably my favorite run of films on the channel so far. I'm sad. I'm so freaking sad. Okay, whatever. Let's do the intros. Hey, what's up? My name's Chanel. If you're new here, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, we screen movies from the comforts of my childhood bedroom, and we do it all from a filmmaker's perspective. That's me. I'm the filmmaker, actor, whatever, writer, director. I just have a running commentary going in my head at all times when I'm watching the movies and I like to capture it on the film and put it online for people to criticize. Today's film is Back to the Future Part 3. Um, we are at the end of probably my favorite run of films on the channel so far. Oh my god, I'm actually just like giddy with excitement. I cannot wait to visit this cast one more time. I wish there were more, but there are not. And I know we're going back to the old west. Thanks to that little epilogue thing at the end of two. Number two had all of my alarm bells ringing because for better or worse, I have my 21, I have like my modern day filmmaker brain on. So number two just constantly felt like they were hoodwinking me. Like I was consistently looking for that M. Night Shyamalan, like just kidding, we're taking this all back moment. Everything about like the weirdness or if anything had like a quirk factor or if anything struck me as like weird, I was like, oh, this must be like the alt. This is like the alt 2015 off of the alt 1985 because it's so weird and we're gonna get a normal 2015. And like that is like the problem with watching this post 2015 or even like put, like in the common era at all. So yeah, I envy you if you saw this when it was intended in the year 1990. So yeah, so my number one, I would like describe as like pure elation and just like pure giddiness. And number two, I let myself get really confused, but it wasn't confusing. Like it was just me over reading into everything. And you guys have been so kind about it. You're like, um, <laughs> Shan, you're wrong. And I was like, ah, oh, damn it, whatever. I was like very prepared to be wrong. So number three, I'm ready to just take the ride. Everything at face value. We're going back to 1885. We're going to save Doc. Yahoo! I'm so excited. And do I have anything else to say? Um, maybe I will take this moment to tell you that I have a Patreon, and if you want to watch my full-length reactions to Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, and this one, Back to the Future 3, go, go on over to my Patreon, and I have like the watch-along option. And then I have a couple other tiers coming at you. I am going back through the archives, and I am looking for old full-length reactions. I know for a fact I definitely have Uncle Buck. And as long as I don't do anything embarrassing in the video, I will put that one out soon. I wish I was born in the 80s so I could have seen this. When it was intended, folks. I think the only other thing I'll say to you is if you are not subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. Maybe you'll wait until the end of this video. I don't know. Hit the subscribe button. And um, on that note, Let's get right into today's video, which is Back to the Future Part 3. <laughs> the same twinkling steel Spielberg. Twinkle, twinkle, Zemeckis. <laughs> right where we left off, baby. I know why this sequence is so iconic, because we see it three times. It comes back three times. Oh my god, if this if I were in theaters right now, I'd be like, yeah. You guys have so many goosebumps. <laughs> Every time they say back to the future, I just like I just like get this like wave of like full body emotion. ZZ Top is in this, okay. 1985. After that, after that, I can't recall what happened. In fact, I don't even remember how I got home. Perhaps the gigawatt was charged. I appreciate this recap. This is exposition. Hey, Doc. Undoubtedly, this was some sort of a digital image. 
It's a very interesting story, Future Boy. But it's just one little thing that doesn't make sense. Future Boy? If the me of the future is now in the past. He sent me a letter. Dear Marty, suitable replacement parts will not be invented until 1947. 1955 counterpart, that's me. I repeat, do not attempt to come back here to get me. I am perfectly happy living in the fresh air. And He's your dog, Doc. Einstein, it's what you call your dog in 1985. Christopher Lloyd is so perfect in this role. <laughs> it's like everything that's weird about this movie, the fact that he's a dog named Einstein makes him be like... September 1st, 1885. I never knew I could write anything so no, much. No, no, <laughs> I never should have let Biff get to Do you guys hear the little the ticking of the clock the just underneath it all? <laughs> Wow. Wow. Waste no time. They caught their audience up, and I'm here, and I'm ready. There she is. Can I go to the library and look myself up in the old newspaper archives? What's wrong? What's wrong, Copernicus? Come on. <gasps> Come on, let's go. Come on. Wow, another perfectly constructed moment in our screenplay. He's talking about, I wonder if I end up in the history books. Can I go to the library and look myself up in the old newspaper archives? You know, now that I know that I go back to 1885, can I go back to the library and look myself up? I don't know, Doc. You're the one that's always saying, you know, it's not good to know too much about your own desk. Blah, blah, blah. Boom. Copernicus is whining why he discovers the dog has died. That just like little bit of foreshadowing dialogue immediately followed by an image like this and a discovery like this is so much sweeter than if we just had the dog discover this because that could have happened. The dog could just whine and they could go see this, no problem. Yeah, I have, dog. <laughs> Clint Eastwood never wanted anything like this. Clint Eastwood. Hey, or to a spot that's geographically unknown, you don't want to crash into some tree that once existed in the past. You don't want to hit some tree. Directly toward that screen, accelerating 88 miles an hour. Wait a minute. They'll instantly be transported to 1885, and those Indians won't even be there. Right. Yes, they will. Well, but for real. Maybe. It's gonna work? I knew it. I'm so stressed. I would have never found that cave. I love that movies are so perfectly constructed because like I don't have to worry. But like me, I'd be like, I'd die right there. <laughs> Can you outrun a bear? Wow. Nike owes these people. If Marty can outrun a bear in our Nikes, you can play Little League in them. Mom? 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 Mom, is that you? Times three. There. Well, you're my... You're my... My... And what might your name be, sir? Well, it's... Mc... Eastwood? Clint. <gasps> Clint Eastwood? <laughs> Get your head, me husband. She's wonderful with dialects. Great Will job. Excuse me. So William is his... Grandfather? A word with you. Oh, A I... word with you? I can't do Irish. I've tried. Ooh, a little variation on the theme. Dun 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 dun. <sighs> little unsure sounding, that theme. Oh, the circus was in town. Must have got that shirt off on the dead child. Oh. <laughs> this feels serious again, you know? Like, so I feel real danger now. In 2015, it was like... <laughs> Moonwalk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love that choice. Let's bring the 1980s into the 1880s. Great job. Wow, this is actually scary. Wow, wow, wow. Shoot the fleas off the doors, Doug. Yards, cannon. Looking behind you when you walk, because one day you're going to get a bullet in your back. <sighs> Man, am I happy to see you, Doc. Doc. But it's good to see you, Marty. Marty, you're going to have to... What idiot dressed you in that outfit? <laughs> you. You did. My involvement in such a social relationship here in 1885 could result in... Of the, space -time the juxtaposition of him saying, I can't be in such a social relationship with all his weirdo gadgets going. I was waiting to see if this was a trend, but they're using long takes in this film too. Okay. Ice. All that for a single cube. It's not going to be a gas station around here until sometime in the next century. Gasoline. So what do we do? Use a horse. This is awesome. That's amazing. What a shot. Wow. Do trains go up to 88 at this time? That's it. Well, I've had her up to 55 myself. <laughs> Knew it. I hear it. Just not thinking fourth dimensionally. Right, right. I have real problems. Don't you see? Me too, Marty. Me too. <laughs> Go save Clara. This is so epic. This is so epic. Let me brown at your service, miss. What sort of science? Astronomy? Chemistry? Actually, I'm a student of all sciences. Hey, Doc. This is exactly what number three needed. A lover for Doc. Damn. I apologize for the crudity of this model. Yeah, no, Doc, it's not the scale. Yes, I apologize for the crudity of this model. It's my favorite joke. I love this. We did this in one. This just feels like a warm, comforting blanket. I love this movie. Quick, cover the DeLorean. He did this when, in the first one, when his mom came. Quick cover the DeLorean. I would really like to talk about formula in sequels. Where have you loved it and where have you hated it? I think every single time they've repeated a line or a plot point, I've loved it and it's so well done. And I can only think of maybe the Pitch Perfect series where they did this and it got old by three. One was great, two was fine. By three, I was like, so let's talk, let's talk sequels, baby. That's what I want to hear about. Okay, back in. Move it this way. <laughs> this is sexy. It turns fuzzy. Mm -hmm. See? But if you turn it... Everything becomes... Clear. Clear. <laughs> I can't with this. <clears throat> the only problem is we'll never be able to show it to anybody. Smile, Doc. That's so satisfying. Video Tell games? One thing. Where did you learn to shoot like? Video games. 7-Eleven. <laughs> Was there video games at 7-Eleven? Frisbee. Far out. What was the meaning of that? It was right in front of him. What was the meaning of that? It was right in front of him. I damn you! To hell! He's gonna frisbee. <laughs> you! What's wrong, dude? You yellow! Is that like chicken? Nobody calls me. Nobody calls me yellow. What about Monday? We doing anything Monday? Uh, no, Monday be fine. You can kill him on Monday. <laughs> I'll be back this way on Monday. <laughs> They're poking such fun at the idea that we know that they die Monday, or that we know that Doc dies Monday. Yes. 
all these effects have to work practically because the camera's not cutting and it is just going, going, going. Just such fun. Doc. Can we get some Marty booty? <laughs> you talking to me, Tannen? You talking to me? Make my day. I would do that. I would like practice like movie lines. Just need to take your measurement. Oh look, Hal, I don't want to buy a suit. <laughs> Marty's no, gonna die. My coffin? What? Great Scott. I know this is heavy. Great Scott. Marty, why are you wearing yes. that? Yes. You're not considering way up against Marty. Yeah. I've made a decision. Uh -huh. I'm not going with you tomorrow. I'm staying here. He went back for you, bitch. What are you talking about? I'm, I have to just think this out loud, so... Sorry. So my questions still remain. Is there two DeLoreans in 1885 right now? I'm really bad at this. I'm super bad at this. Let's hit play. It doesn't matter. But I realize that I don't belong here, and I have to go back. And where might that be? And wherever you go and take me with you. Can she go? I've heard some whoppers in my day, but the fact that you'd expect me to entertain a notion like that is so- This is a real Western. This is a scene straight out of a Western. And I don't want to see you anymore. That at least would have been respectful. Show her the time machine. Show her the time machine. The way she throws herself on the bed like that. This is a frickin' Western. Evan, what can I get you? The usual? No, it's just Germany. Milk. Make it chocolate. <sighs> Wake up! Wakes up his friends with a kick in the gut. In the future, we don't need horses. We have motorized carriages. What is he doing? He's telling them about the future. Of course we run. But for recreation. For fun. Run for fun? What the hell kind of fun is that? I agree. How much has he had? None. That's the first one. He hadn't touched it yet. <laughs> he just lacks the hold. Gentlemen, excuse me, but my friend and I have to catch a train. Here to you, Blacksmith. <laughs> and to the future. Amen. 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 What? He can't drink? Come on, Doc. Wake up. Oh, my God. What? He's gonna choke. He's still out. Oh, lad. That was just a reflex action. Oh, take a few more <laughs> uh, that was just a reflex. Walk away. So I'm gonna have to forfeit. forfeit. Yes, he breaks forfeit. it. I think you ain't nothing but a gutless yellow turd. And I'm giving you to the counter ten. Marty, come out here and prove you're fine. No, 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 no. And I don't care what anybody else says either. <laughs> Doc, Doc, you okay? I think so. Yay! Oh. Finally. What a... Listen, you got a back door to this place? Yeah, it's in the back. Let's go, Doc. <laughs> Are you coming out here, or do I have to? Hey, I really miss here is Tylenol. Oh, I would miss it out of Tylenol, mostly Advil. Are gonna kill somebody? Imagine. I thought we could settle this like men. You thought wrong, dude. Bulletproof vest. There's no other way. Or he missed. <laughs> Little Marty can pack a punch. Newer. The spin around happens in one, two, and three. I like this little shaky cam action. Really put you in the height of the heat of the battle. Oh, I'm really anxious. The way they really just make this happen all at the last minute. Oh, every movie, man. Gets ya. 
Interesting. They did this top of the train stuff in Polar Express. Do you guys remember? Speaking of other Zemeckis films. Oh, the coordination just kills me. It's too much. Longer. I use them in my pour so I don't have to stoke it. These three in the furnace will ignite sequentially. Christopher Lloyd has a really hard job in this movie. He's got to spit out that jargon and that dialogue in the most chaotic of circumstances at all times. It's very hard. You have to be extremely memorized as an actor if you're gonna do that. God, this is, that's the stun I don't like. Machine. Talk. Let's go, bro. Let's go, buddy. I love you. That's it. They're done for. They can't do this. The hoverboard. It's gonna help them. Jesus. Eastwood Ravine, baby. Named after Clint Eastwood. <laughs> oh. It hit me like a second after the fact they destroyed the time machine. Now we just have to hope it's the good 1985. It is. It's the good one. Well, Doc, it's destroyed. What's wrong? We thought you went to the lake. You wore that to the lake. <laughs> God, you guys are going back to normal. You wore that to the lake? Some slipping beauty. Chicken? <laughs> Grab hold of something. No, he broke the chicken thing. No. Yes. <sighs> Wraith. Yes. Oh, they're paying a proper goodbye. Take a picture. Sure gonna miss him, Jen. What the hell? picture what is it yeah it's great doc thanks of course it's a race it means your future hasn't been written yet no one's has your future is whatever you make it so make it a good one all right boys buckle up it's exactly what i wanted back to the future Wow. At the screen. Wow. 
Wow. <sighs> so f***ing satisfying. So f***ing satisfying. Wow. Back to the future part three. I now know a world where I've seen all three Back to the Future movies. I mean, it was phenomenal. Just great. I, I feel like I have nothing to say. I feel like if I left the movie theater after that, like I would be so satisfied. I would be just like so happy. And I would need to be like alone for a little bit. Like I think I would just like go in my room and like not talk to anyone for a long time. Because I still feel like that. I actually feel like I don't want to talk about this movie right now. <laughs> Which is like... That's kind of how you know you need to like sit with it and like let it wash over you. I mean, there's nothing n like new or whatever. It was just so good, so heartwarming. This is like what sucks about this moment because I like I have to talk about it, right? Because you want to hear what I have to say. But like, I think I said it all during the movie. I think that this, these three films owe a lot to Alan Silvestri. Um, in addition to the screenplays, because hello, they're perfect. I like one and three. I think one's my favorite, duh. Then I like number three. Two is my least favorite because of the weirdness, but you needed all that, I understand now. Like, I get it now. You needed all the weirdness in two to kind of have that amazing payoff in three where Doc says, like, your future is unwritten. It's up to you. Like, that, like, thank God. I, in a way, I feel like my prediction was like a little bit on because I was like, this 2015 can't be the 2015. We can't have a Marty who doesn't play music. We can't have a Marty who's like, you know, like washed up and gets mad and fired and beats people up when they call him chicken. Like we can't have a Marty like that. So just the fact, I just can't imagine a more perfect ending, just that it's unwritten and it's up to him. How's my eye makeup? Cause I did cry. I, love 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 that like last minute choice i mean we know it wouldn't be a back to the future movie without that last minute peril i always say it well i said it twice um but we needed that and then i love the choice to have doc not get in the delorean that was so sad so sad but he always needed and wanted a woman he didn't need her but he wanted her what did i write i wrote down alan silvestri exclamation point i wrote this exposition is perfect. It's perfect in every movie. Doc is our brain, and he is going to tell us what we need to know. I wrote down, <laughs> when Doc said to spend my future in the past, I just thought that was a funny line, so I wrote it. Um, I like the all the callbacks. Mom, is that you? Times three in all three movies. The manure times three. I wrote Moonwalk, because that was... That, in, if you saw this movie in theaters, I need you to comment below because I'd imagine the whole theater erupted in applause at that moment. Like, I couldn't imagine that didn't play to applause. Um, I wrote down Clayton Ravine, Eastwood Ravine. The joke of, sorry for the crudity of the model, that is my favorite line that Doc has ever said. On record, that's my favorite. <laughs> sorry for the crudity of the model, but it's not to scale. So funny. I like how in every movie we kind of go to some sort of town festival, like a party. I liked how like most of the Wild West, they were poking fun at um, somebody or something, like you dying on Monday. So they kept bringing up like Monday at 7 a.m. No, Monday at 8 a.m. Like it was just that funny. We get Marty saying great Scott in this one instead of just Doc saying it all the time. Why did I write, but that's not the truth? Well, felt profound in the moment. So, yet again, satisfying. Yeah, I don't know. I love, love, love Harry Potter, but I knew how they ended because I've read the books. So I can't imagine a more satisfying trilogy. So if you have one, recommend it below, please. And don't say Lord of the Rings or I will hurt you through the screen. Yeah, so should we go on to the trivia? Oh my God, this is so scary. When Mad Dog Tannen tried to lynch Marty, Michael J. Fox was accidentally hanged, rendering him unconscious for a short time. He records this in his autobiography. Ooh. Oh my god. Clint Eastwood was asked for permission about his name being used for Marty in the film. He consented and was said to be tickled by the homage. That's really cute. Oh, I love this. According to the book, 
Billy Gibbons, rock and roll gearhead, ZZ Top was hanging around the set and was asked to be the town asked to be in the town band. During one take, the camera broke. While waiting for the camera to be repaired, Michael J. Fox asked if they would play Hey Good Lookin', which they did. Afterwards, more requests were played. Two hours later, someone inquired if the camera had been repaired. Robert Zemmix replied that it had been fixed for quite a while. He just didn't want to stop the party that had evolved. That is absolutely so cute. Marty uses a Frisbee's pie plate to knock a gun out of Mad Dog's hand. In 1871, the Frisbee Pie Company started in Connecticut. Their pie pans were thrown on the campus of Yale, and this eventually led to the invention of Frisbee's. What a good addition to the screenplay. Just like layering in that, like those layers of authenticity. It's so cool. Thomas F. Wilson, who plays Mad Dog, performed all his worst writing stunts himself. He also did the trick where he lassoes Marty just before we meet the 1885 Doc. Thomas F. Wilson, man, just blew my mind for taking on all these different roles. To film the destruction of the DeLorean, the filmmakers consulted with the engineer of the diesel freight train that would smash the DeLorean to pieces. When asked if smashing the car might derail the train, the engineer replied, Are you kidding? I've been waiting to do this my whole life. Wow, they really did it, it looks like. Like, no miniatures or anything. The 1885 time setting was partly due to a suggestion by Michael J. Fox, who had commented to producers how he always thought it would be fun to act in a western, and I agree. Three, the three old-timers in the saloon were played by Dub Taylor, Pat, Pat Buttram, and Harry Carey Jr., who played sidekicks, town drunks, and colorful townsfolk in hundreds of westerns and television shows. What the hell kind of fun is that? <laughs> The drive-in theater was constructed specifically for this film. It was built in Monument Valley and demolished immediately after filming. No films were ever screened there. Boo! This is fun. The name on the manure wagon in 1885 reads A. Jones. In Back to the Future 1985, the name on the manure truck from 1955 read D. Jones. What? The saloon in 1885 Hill Valley is the same location as Lou's Cafe in 1955, the gym in 1985, and the Cafe 80s in 2015. Damn. The franchise trademark, which we got. Every time Marty's knocked out, he always wakes up and says, Mom, Leah Thompson is always present, and she tells him to be still now and tells him exactly for how long he's been out cold. This is the only film in the trilogy where Marty and Doc Brown exchange catchphrases. Great Scott. I know, this is heavy. The scene where Marty and Jennifer kiss on the porch was the only scene shot while Back to the Future Part 2 was being made. That is cool. That was a question I had. And that makes sense for continuity. Then rather than like bring her back, get her back all in the same makeup and make sure they're like all dressed in the same everything again. Yes, I knew it. See, I'm not a total idiot. There are two DeLoreans at the same time in this film. The one hidden in the mine waiting to be fixed in 1955 and the one that Marty uses to save Doc. The location shoot was so dusty that many of the crew took to wearing paint masks. It did look very dusty. I knew there was some Polar Express in here. When Doc blows the train whistle, he exclaims, I wanted to do that all my life. This is also said by the boy in the Polar Express, 2004, when he blew the train whistle. Both movies were directed by Robert Zemeckis. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally got this. Marty avoids being killed by stuffing an iron stove door under his poncho to deflect a bullet. He has taken the name of Clint Eastwood, who did a similar move in the movie, A Fistful of Dollars, which is the scene that Rich Biff was watching in the hot tub in part two. Yep. So we knew that was a foreshadowing moment. Doc's flying time travel train is a culmination of technology used by Doc in all three films. The train, 1885, time travel, originated in 1955, completed in 1985, and hover conversion and fusion, 2015. Love. The train that crashes into the bottom of the ravine was actually a model train. Yeah, that looked phenomenal, that crash. So ZZ Top cameos in the town band. I could not pick ZZ Top out of a lineup, I'm sorry, but I did see in the credits that he was there. So, in the interest of time, I will totally cut the trivia here. As always, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this movie, so comment below. Did you see it in theaters when it came out? I must, 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 must know that fact. Yeah, if you want more watches like this, please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, don't forget to share, don't forget to meet me down below where we will talk about this film and what we have just witnessed together. If you want my full-length reaction to this film, go join my Patreon for $10. You can watch along with me, and I am definitely, definitely going back in the archives and adding old full-length rewatches to just, like, make that catalog nice and robust for you. So thank you for all the support. Thanks for watching with me today. And on that note, I'm going to go um, eat a snack.